Welcome, welcome, folks who are joining. Welcome to this Meet the Miniatures Zoom. Um, yeah, we have a couple of, we have a minute or so. So while we're waiting, definitely shout out, say hello. Um, where are you Zooming from? You've been on before, this is your first Zoom, love to know. Uh, chat box will definitely be open the whole time, which is kind of cool. Uh, where's my chat box? I need to see my chat box. Where's everybody at? Say hello. <laughs> Um, we are having a beautiful, beautiful, stunning day here in New York. And um, yeah, before I get started, a couple of housekeeping things. Um, hey, Marcella, good to see you. Hey, Knoxville. <laughs> Hi, Kathy, how are you? Um, yeah, so just a couple of things that are happening. Hey, Allegra. <laughs> Mary B, I love seeing you guys pop up. It's really good to see. How is everybody? UK, thanks for staying up late. Ooh. And Lynn, good to see you. <laughs> I'm a oh, high bro. That's I'm a bro. Have I reached bro status? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> I don't know if I should take it that way. All right, so let's go through um, just some some housekeeping. What's going on? Um, meet the miniaturist next Saturday. We're going to be doing it a little different next weekend. Um, we're doing a Saturday afternoon, three p.m. Finally connecting with Craig LeBenz. He's the structure furniture guy, um, outstanding miniaturist, uh, 3 p.m. next week. Registration's now open. I'm gonna put the link in the bio so you can go ahead and register now. Um, Donald's on with us today, so shout out to Donald. Thank you, Donald, for helping behind the scenes. Say hello to Donald. He likes to get a, you know, get some love and chew. <laughs> um, so Craig LeBenz next Saturday. But before then, actually, this Friday, I'm doing something a little new on Instagram. I am doing an Instagram Live. I'm calling it a mini meetup, sort of um, a mini roulette, sort of. I'm basically going live, and I'm just connecting with folks in a half-hour period who are miniaturists. And I'm going to be chatting with them, and it's going to be moving really quickly. So I'm going to be talking for a few minutes, checking out what folks are doing, and then sort of moving to the next guy. Um, who wants to connect. So some will be random, some will be not so random. Um, but if you're not following me on Instagram already, go ahead and follow. It's going to be um, Friday, May 7th at 8 p.m. Eastern. It'll be sort of a fun little way for folks to just meet up on Instagram and see what's going on. Um, I don't have a Mother's Day Meet the Miniatures planned or any event, but um, I would love to know what you guys think. Is it is it kind of weird to do something on Mother's Day? What do you think? Should I plan for something? Let me know, comment section below. Um, and then Sunday, May 23rd, um, uh, that back on a regular Meet the Miniature schedule is a special Meet the Miniatures, the Guild Edition. So if you're not familiar with the um, IGMA, International Guild of Miniature Artisans, I am going to be sort of um, interviewing a whole bunch of people from that organization. So if you don't know about it, join us because you're going to learn a lot from all that they do from an educational standpoint, uh, from a, um, a, a show circuit standpoint, what they do in this miniatures world. You're not going to want to miss that. Um, so it's going to be really fun. And then, oh, thank you. Donald just reminded me. May 16th, also uh, a Meet the Miniaturist, we're going to be having uh, Wendy Littlepage, who's the, the director of the Denver Doll and Miniature Museum. Uh, she's going to be on. I'm going to, you know, we're bringing her back as we Changed that date a couple of times, but now we're on for Sunday, May 16th, 4 p.m. I will have the registration links in about, a, in about a week or so. So definitely sign up on my website so you don't miss any updates and all of that. But with that, I would like to introduce Nicholas Bush, who's with us all the way from Davenport, Iowa. That's right. Um, and thank you for joining us today on this Meet the Miniatures. I just want to talk a little bit about how I found you. I mean, as with everything else, Instagram, but the thing that struck me most was sort of the beautiful, beautiful imagery that you that you capture. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the deep dive into it took me through the rabbit hole of how you get there. And of course, miniatures is a big part of that. And I was like, I got to meet this guy. I got to talk to this guy. And I want to sort of bring I want to show folks what you do and how you do it, because this this whole Meet the Miniatures is it's really all about inspiring people mm -hmm. and to see outside the sort of the dollhouse miniature bubble that sort of a lot of us play in, which is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we realize how much we learn and how much we see and how much we gain from meeting folks like you who do other things that are outside our 
comfort zone, if you will, of miniatures. So yeah. thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your work with us. And I, I let's just get right to it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this because your background is not necessarily in quote unquote dollhouse miniatures. So talk a little bit about what you do and how you do it. And Bridge, if you can, what you were doing before, because because I think it's fascinating how you started in one place mm -hmm. and you ended up in this place, especially around the photography sort of part of it. So there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, great. Yeah, thanks, Darren. I appreciate it. Yeah, you having me. Uh, this is a big honor. You know, I've been I've watched a few of these before. A lot of fun um, to be amongst you guys is pretty cool. Um, now, my my background, I started with, uh, you know, so I'll make this real quick. It, it was photography, wedding photography. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and you know, that that's a very lucrative business, but it's, uh, but I, you're kind of confined to what you do. Like you just, it's kind of the same thing every week, every weekend, and you're editing the same photos over and over again. Yeah. So on my free time, I was, I was, uh, taking, doing toy photography and toy photography is kind of, uh, it's kind of a big thing, sort of like in the, in its own little world, mm. but I wanted to take a step further and I wanted to. There's a few toy photographers out there that could make these really ultra realistic photos uh -huh. with miniatures. And so I wanted to see, I was like, well, you know, if that looks good, I can co maybe composite and Photoshop a human being in there to see if it looks right. Uh -huh. So I started toying around with it. I took like a toy car. I Photoshopped myself in there with like, it looked like I used some like flower in a toy car and it kind of looked like I was standing in a blizzard. Yeah. And uh, that picks that, that, and I made like a little video of it and that actually went, uh, I got, I got, how this happened, I don't know, but it somehow went viral on YouTube. Like in a, in like three days, it got like nine hundred thousand views. I don't know how it happened. It just I woke up one day and it just like exploded. And I was like, oh my god! So I was like, well, you know what? I can make this look better. So I started looking online on how to build miniatures. I found um, a lot of stuff like on YouTube is going to be a lot of uh, military one thirty fifth scale uh, tutorials right. on on making like streets and stuff. Yeah. So that's kind of what got me in that specific size. Then um, I started buying molds, started buying um, like uh, like balsa wood and making just constructing stuff one one thing at a time. I started real small, started with the swing set was my first thing I built. Then yeah. built like a little house, doing the so photos. Wait, so, mm -hmm. so what time period are we talking about? Oh, like uh, that was about three and a, uh, let's see, that had to be about three years ago now, three and a half years ago, maybe. Just about three-ish years ago, you yeah. found this thing called miniatures. Mm-hmm. And do you have an art background? Like, what is your background in terms of study? Did you study photography? Did you study art? Uh, no, no, like no real studying, but it was a, um, I was like, uh, I, I should say like, I guess just photography. Like it was, I, I mean, I, I still am. I'm really into photography with my camera and stuff. So, yeah. you know, that it, it, it helps kind of like when you look at my photos of my projects, yeah. it's how it, it helps. Uh, making a composition of a photo look right, especially with designing my miniature sets. Um, I, I know what to look for. So, so we're gonna get there because there's so many levers that could pull to to the final project, to the final piece. Yeah. It blows my head away. So I, for my own sake, let's let's stay with miniatures. Yeah, <laughs> so let's do it. You started making miniatures. You started yeah. working in small scale, very small scale. And a lot, of, a lot of miniatures see it as sort of model railroad scale. Yeah. 135th, I think is what I might've seen on your, on, on 35th. Some of your pieces. Mm -hmm. And so different materials, like what kind of materials do you use? Uh, mostly my goat, I, I use a lot of balsa wood uh, for anything that like in real life, if the, if the, uh, if the uh, structure had wood, I use balsa wood to, it makes the most realist, realistic looking texture. Um, for bricks, I use plaster, um, not plaster of Paris, but it's like this really hard uh, type of plaster you can find like on Amazon or whatever. It like, it dries really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And I pour that plaster in these molds, like, like brick molds and, uh, and like stone and yeah. different types of molds you can buy. And I just, it's kind of like a Lego set. Once I have everything out, I can just start crafting and building. I mean, I, I should say it's a similar uh, way that people make dollhouse stuff. I mean, it's almost exactly the same. It's just a little bit mine's smaller than. Yeah. And are there finishing techniques that you use to make stuff look a certain way? Or how do you, how do you finish your pieces? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's like weathering, um, yeah. you know, there's like different, a lot of different oils and acrylics you can buy from like Vallejo that, uh, that I use. Um, and it's, I don't know. It's like a combination of different things. So let's say, let's just start with like the, br the brick wall. Yeah. I, make the, I, I make the brick wall. I put the motor, mortar in there. Then I kind of use like a gray wash in between the brick where the mortar is. And it kind of gives mm -hmm. it that, uh, like that weather look. And yeah. it just kind of re re rinse, repeat those, pro uh, those steps. Um, that seems to work. So yeah. 
Yeah, no, so that that's awesome. So we do actually have a question already about, about some of the equipment you use. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of tools are you using? I mean, obviously in the photograph here, you're using tweezers. What are some of your, what are the tools that you use? Uh, the biggest, let's see here, what do I use? I use a, I have a, um, a foam cutter, a wire foam cutter. It's like, I, I should have, every time I get asked this, I forget the name of the stupid thing, but it's like, it, it's like an electric wire foam cutter with like a wire that strips up and you push oh. the foam through there and you can kind of guide it. And yeah. so it cuts, it, it cuts it and you can like do like 90 degree angles real easy. That's, that's something I use a lot of if I have to use foam. Um, I have something uh, from, you know, the company Micromark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They have yeah. a, uh, they have um, like a cutter thing, like a board with like a, with like a cutter on it. And you can, um, so if I want to do like a, a bunch of wood strips, I just put that piece in there, cut it and it'll cut every strip the exact same um, length. Right. And, and I use, I mean, a lot of the same stuff most people use my X-Acto knife. I use a whole lot. Um, I don't use anything really out of the ordinary. Uh, right. Well, just, that electric mm -hmm. cutter foam thing I'm looking into. <laughs> yeah, it's like a hundred, it's like $110 or something. Um, yeah. And so if you like, if you, if you cut a lot of foam, it's not, it's good to have. I want to, I want to share just a short video that you produced that's on your Instagram account, which we're going to share in the links below if we haven't already. Um, it just shows you're working on, on, on this project. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's talk a little bit about this. That one, oh, my Alice in Wonderland, obviously. Uh, that one was one of my, that was one of my earlier projects. Um, I, so, I, mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I'm sorry, go, go on. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> well, well, what I was going to say is, is that, that that was actually the, um, I just thought, I don't know, there's really nothing, there's no magic wizardry to it. I just thought of, I watched the movie. Yeah. Uh, the girl that played Dorothy asked yeah. me if she could play uh, Alice. I right. Like, All right. So I just watched the movie and I saw the scene of where she's walking through the woods and meets the Cheshire cat. And I was like, yep, yeah, that sound looks like a good scene to make. And I looked online how to make uh, trees and I saw the wire, the wire technique, um, twisting the wire together and putting the, uh, the paint on it and stuff. And that's yeah. what I did. And yeah. I mean, so, so what inspired you to do this is I, I know I didn't pull the wizard of Oz and I should have mentioned that's really what got like totally attracted me to like, I got to talk to this guy. Cause you did yeah. a whole wizard of Oz set in miniature mm -hmm. for a project. Um, mm -hmm. And so this came after that. That, yeah, this was the very next one. Um, the Wizard of Oz, how I came up with that is I ordered these brick molds when they came in the mail. I was just sitting there and I had uh, my food dye sitting next to me and I looked at the yellow food dye and I was like, huh, well, I wonder if I just dye these bricks yellow and I wonder if I can make a yellow brick road. And I did it and I spent like the weekend doing it and I laid out a bunch and that's that's how it came to be. Just simple as that. Yeah, I, I mean, I just, I, I think I went too fast. I wanted, I thought I had the Wizard of Oz piece, but I don't. Yeah, I don't have any video of that. Yeah, all right, so so we're actually looking at a shot of your studio with this, let's call it a set. Do you wanna call it a set? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you call it diorama? Yeah, it's like a diorama. Like this is my older stuff. Like if you look, it kind of looks like a movie set because like, yeah. Like the outside looks like kind of like shit, um, and but the middle looks is kind of like what you're looking at. Um, yeah. I, I like I, I basically just like especially a lot of these older ones. I just made it look good, so make sure it looks great in front of a camera because, yeah. and yeah. Well, that's actually something I want to talk about because mm -hmm. it, you know, you're really creating for the camera, and that ultimately is your craft. Is yeah. that is that right to say? Yeah. Um, Yes, of course, the miniatures are awesome, but you're really working towards creating that one perfect photograph, correct? Yes, right, correct. So so let's talk about that. So you're mm -hmm. building the, the the diorama or the set itself, and then you're shooting it. Mm -hmm. What what go let's talk about what goes into the process of making the miniature so that it looks great for the camera. And then of course there's a whole nother set, which is a digital art, which the the finishing, which happens in the computer, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. okay. This is the, the this is the hard part, and yeah, you'll know why. There's not a lot of people that do this, and this is for good reason because it's uh -huh. it, it is a, it is a pain in the ass. Um, the like you have to think. Okay, when you shoot a camera, you shoot the camera, and you're shooting a diorama. You have to think. You have to think perspective. You want to make sure your photo in the end is going to look like it has depth, and not just like flat. Um, uh -huh. And there's a lot of different things you have to think of. You have to think of the lighting, how the shadows are going to reflect in. If you shoot human models, like here, like I shot uh, Alice, you have to think about lighting her correctly so it matches the way you light the diorama. It's very complicated and, mm. and it's, it's a big pain, but like there's a few things, if you, okay. So if you're trying to shoot, let's say you're trying to shoot your dollhouse stuff, uh, lighting is always a big, big, uh, 
big factor. Uh -huh. um, there's different types of lighting. There's hard light, there's soft light, continuous light, strobe light, tungsten light. You know, there's all sorts of different stuff you can use. And oh, wait a second, I'm bad. You're jumping right. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I guess I'll, there's I'll a lot of thought about lighting. When yeah, light, light is a big thing. How mm -hmm. things are going to, how, how light's going to bounce off a certain, like rooftop, let's say. Yes. So that, what does that do? Does that affect how you'll create something or how you'll position it or both? I mean. Well, a little bit of both. So like different materials reflect differently inside the camera. Um, it's kind of like, you know, like the difference between making a plastic brick road between the difference between using a plaster brick road. It yeah. will look, and if you paint it gray, it will look different in front of the camera. The plaster will, or the plastic will have a slightly uh, more shine to it. The plaster will have a slightly more matte look to it. And it looks a little bit more real because the grains of the plaster are in there. And it's just the way it reflects inside the camera. Um, so that's all stuff you have to think about. Well, also when you think about trees, yeah. uh, a great way to make trees is use, um, there's trees that you can buy from Woodland Scenics or like the fake trees, or you can make your own, the wire trees. That's another way. Or there's, um, oh, what is the, uh, what is the, um, what is that branch that grows out in California in the desert? Um, um just like is, a type of plant or a business? Or it's, a, it's a, it's like a tree, a bush. Um, a cactus? No, it grows out in the desert. I, 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 when I drove out to Oregon, I picked a bunch and, oh, uh, what Joshua is it called? Trees? What is it? Say that one more time. Someone says Joshua trees. No, not Josh trees. They're like the, they're everywhere on the high, on the side of the highway. Sycamore. Sycamore. <laughs> no, 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 no. They only grow. I know grow on the West coast and they're on the ground everywhere. There's, it's everywhere. But, okay. yeah. but anyways, if you use, if you use, if you can manage to use some type of real branches that look like realistic small trees, real branches have the best texture, especially for your camera. It, it, the way it reflects and looks inside the camera, it looks absolutely convincing. Um, like you can see in my, in my, one of my uh, Wizard of Oz picks, the one where she's walking through the forest with, um, with the Tin Man's house. Yeah. I, used, I used real tree, little branch trees in there. And that's why the trees look so real. Right. So, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna really just encourage folks to go check out your Instagram so that they can see. This is just not working. I think this is corrupt. My, I, can't, I don't think I could play that last video because it's not letting, right. it's not letting me, it's not letting me quiet it down. Um, all right, so I'm going to keep this on. We're going to get to it in a second because this is sort of future speak. But, yep. Um, so talk a little bit about the the editing process. I mean, how extensive is that? How, how much time do you spend with a piece, and then how much time do you spend? shooting and then how much time do you spend post and edit to achieve Let's, the longest part is building the miniatures that takes me about most of my projects take me over from two to three months yeah um and it's like pre pre-production setting up the project um it's kind of like you know um you know like setting up a movie or tv show yeah the photography part isn't too long i can usually do it in a weekend um I, I should say, as I'm building these sets, like as I'm building this, like yeah. as you see right there on your screen, I'm yeah. doing test shots as I go along. So let's say if I work on this for two weeks, I'll go downstairs, I'll take my camera, I'll do a bunch of test shots to make sure I'm kind of, I'm, I'm going along the right way that I want to go. Right. Then I'll go back to my computer, I'll throw to my, my Photoshop, kind of mess around with this so I can get it kind of, I can kind of see where it's going. Yeah. And I'll do that probably. I've tried, you know, I've been working on this project for like a year. I've probably done maybe 35 test shots on this thing. Um, but then once, so let's say, I'm all done building miniatures. I go downstairs, take the photos, go upstairs. The, po the it depends. If I nail the lighting correctly and I and I have it and I got it how I want, it doesn't take me long. I can do it like in a day. But there's sometimes like the lighting's not quite. I can't get it quite get it to go right. It'll sometimes it'll take me a week or two. So it really just depends per project. Like th th this one has been taking me forever, a all long right, so, time. So let's let's talk about this specific project because this is no one has seen this yet. We're you're all first mm -hmm. to see it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And tell, let's talk about it. What is it? Okay. This was uh, Romeo and Juliet. As you can see with this, I'm actually not, I'm like about halfway done building the whole set. Um, this is in the middle of it. But um, everything on here is going to be uh, scratch built from the ground up. I didn't use any kits, nothing like that. Um, so you're, used, you're seeing a lot of balsa wood, a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of balsa wood, and a lot of plaster, and a lot of time. Um, yeah. yeah it, uh, but it's supposed to be, it's going to be a Romeo and Juliet project is what, is what this is. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be Verona, but then like I talked to like a, uh, it looks more like an English, not Italy, but yeah, 
whatever, I guess it doesn't really matter that much, <laughs> but yeah. So um, yeah. And I have probably like three or four more buildings um, now that I'm done. Um, that's part of this. Well, what inspires you to, to wake up and say, this is the project that I'm going to do. Like, where does that come from? Uh, most of mine, is, it comes from movies actually. Um, ah. Like, you know, I'm a big movie guy, big movie buff. Me and my family, we love watching movies. We watch a lot of them, Yeah, you know, and actually, you know, Things that inspire you. For me, actually, music does a lot. I listen to a lot of movie scores, a lot of uh, modern uh, composers. Yeah. Um, like Max Richter, the guy that did the score for um, The Leftovers and uh, the movie Arrival. He's really good. Um, yeah, there's a lot of composers. When I listen to them, I can start painting a picture in my uh, painting a picture in my head. Yeah. And then that's when I go home and I'll start kind of laying out laying out uh, things to like, hey, can I can I do this? Can I not do this? Then usually after over time, I can, I can uh, and you have this. Yeah. What you see in front of you. So is there one specific image that you have in mind that you're you're ultimately trying to achieve or what yeah when you when you're when you're sitting there working on this huge it's a huge project mm -hmm. like are you thinking I want to what what do I want to get to is there one specific thing or is it a little bit of everything and well with this um I knew with this was just, I guess with this project I knew I wanted six images uh -huh. um the one you're seeing now is the one yeah. where romeo meets juliet where she's standing on the balcony oh can i go to the yep the, oh. which is it's that right there yeah yeah so th that's what one of my final images will look like and this one no one's seen this the only people i've seen this are the two people in the picture so wow and when the thing now that's a yeah so you the, the the final editing process where you're bringing those people you also have to shoot those models do you do that too yeah. 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 I rented, um, what I did was I rented studio time at a, uh, my, cause my, my studio downstairs is not big enough for like real people. It's like the ceiling too not tall enough. So yeah. I have to rent studio studio time at one of my friend's studio and we just go down there and we shoot. It takes me about an hour. Just an hour. About, <laughs> but yeah, about an hour. Yeah. But you also, again, you have to know how, when you're creating the models, how you want to shoot the models so that they fit appropriately and they're doing the right thing. Yeah. So, okay. That's a good question. Um, like let's say let's just take this picture for example. So what I so you can see the light is coming in from in between the buildings. Yeah. Going across Juliet's balcony, right? Yeah. So it, this actually what this was actually the easiest one that I did because I knew exactly okay, so she's gonna be standing the balcony. That means the light needs to be behind her, like it's a sunset coming from behind her. So I made her I made her stand on this like little platform thing in the studio, and I took the light, put it behind her, shot it, came home, dropped it right in there, did a little bit of work. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I had it done. In, I had this one done in probably 30 minutes. That's um, crazy. Yeah, so. so. Where do you find, we do have a, a good question. So where do the models, where do you get, where do the models get the costumes? That's like, there's a whole thing here. Mm -hmm. So you, what, how, where do you get costumes? You have someone doing makeup, what? Like. Uh, well, this, okay. This one in particular was a mishmash of a bunch of things. Everything you see there. Okay, so the, co oh, okay. There's three things. Yeah. One, I have a costume rental. There's a music guild, like where they do like the musicals and stuff yeah. um, here in the Quad Cities. And they have a costume rental place. So I went there and I rented some of the costumes. Like the one that Romeo is wearing is I rented from there. The one that Juliet is wearing, I bought off Amazon for like 50 bucks or something. Those wings are actually a girl, a photographer girl who does like more like boudoir and stuff like that. She has those wings and I asked her if I could use them. She was sure. And she let me borrow the wings. Wow, so, so it's like a collaborative effort. Yeah, it's a big collaborative effort. Like the girl, like the girl, uh, Juliet, uh, Megan, that played Juliet, she did her own makeup. Uh -huh. I asked her if she wanted to make a part. She said, no, she said, I can just do it myself. So I said, meh, cool. And, um, but yeah, sometimes, sometimes the, um, uh, the, 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 the um, human models, sometimes they'll bring, they're like, I have something that might fit it and they'll show me and we'll just use their outfit. Like uh, Alice and Dorothy, their grandma um, knows how to sew real well. She made all their outfits like custom for the, right. for the little girl. So, yeah. That's just incredible. It really is. I mean, it's got like it has like a futuristic feel to it. What, what would you, what would you, how would you describe your style, your your overall aesthetic, your view? What would you say? Um, it's kind. Of, I don't know. That's a good question. It's like it's kind of like it's not like it doesn't like it's. Hmm, it's like it's not real, but it looks real. Yeah, like it's just it's not real. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of like a mixture of both, and it's I don't know like. It's, it's hard to explain because there's not really anybody else that does it. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's like, like, I don't really, yeah. I just call it scale model portrait photography. Yeah. Like, yeah. But 
that's just it's it's oh yeah i think someone brought up a good point which could be fantasy genre could be sure. mm -hmm. um futuristic it's just whatever it is it's beautiful <laughs> thank you thank and you you can tell a lot a lot of work went into it i i'm sh shocked to think that the editing and the digital part of it is the least amount of actually it doesn't surprise me that the most time you're spending is 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 with the models for sure yeah yeah um, but like but all, all, just um what was i gonna say um about oh, just about the amount of you know amount of time you're spending whether it's with the the people with the digital part the models themselves the the scale model pieces it's a lot it's a lot lost my train um, what'd you what'd you what'd you say before that uh <laughs> I don't remember stuff. I don't remember either. I can rewind. It'll come back to you. Yeah, um, well. we're, we're yeah, we're still we're just also trying to we're also folks are throwing around what what it reminds them of, and Maria is saying it reminds me of the art form magic realism. Oh, that's it. That? That, that okay. Oh. Um, ah. I can't. I know what I was gonna say. The reason I do this is because I cannot draw or paint. Like my uh -huh. like it's te like it's terrible. But you know, like an artist, I'm sure that people listening, you get a vision in your head. And like you just like you want to you want to make it you want to achieve your vision yeah. and it's about how can i achieve my vision and this is the only way i know how to because i can't draw i cannot paint i mean i am terrible at it and um there's no amount of practice that can get me anywhere near yeah you know and there's also things i think that you, as, like patience for maybe okay like i don't have patience to learn how to draw but i do have patience to learn how to make these miniatures uh-huh you know what right. i mean everyone has patience for different things and i just happen happen to have it for this so absolutely it depends on where you want to spend your time and what keeps your interest level for sure mm -hmm. yeah i i hear you did we did a question about um what is between the two buildings is it a statue it does look like a statue back there yeah yep um yeah it's a statue it's a uh it's kind of like the courtyard of the uh of the project it's the statue and like the kind of the courtyard and then the other, I thought this was interesting. Cindy, hey Cindy, is saying, would you consider shooting something like this for a real couple? That would be awesome if somebody walked away with something like this. Well, they are the Megan and uh, Eric are a couple. Oh, they are a couple. <laughs> yeah, ah. they are. Yeah. I mean, I think as like you know, going going back to you know your 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 heritage, which is wedding photography. Mm -hmm. I mean, to walk away with something really unique like this putting the wedding folks in there. Oh my. Yeah. We, we thought, we thought about it. And actually my, um, mm. uh, my uh, sister-in-law, she was a, uh, got married and we talked about it. But I was like, man, do I like, okay. So here's the problem. Yeah. How do I charge somebody four months for like two or three pictures worth of work? You know what I mean? Who's going to spend five grand on like two pictures? Like, right. I don't, like, I don't know any, <laughs> I don't know that maybe they will, but well, for something they can't find anywhere else, they, yeah. they might, but that's mm -hmm. a, it, Cindy's saying it's a great gift. It is a great gift. And Mary is saying, we're trying to figure out what, what this, what it is that this is all about. Mary's saying you're a sculptor, you know, full stop. You're an artist, mm -hmm. but just under that, what is, I mean, it's hard to say it, what what exactly it is but artist is definitely you're an artist <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's just i mean it's you yeah. know what what's the paint you know, you know people say why do you do this i'm like well why do people draw why do people paint why do people do anything artistically it's just it yeah. is it is what it is you know i don't know if i like it choose one or the other like photography taking photography out or miniatures out what is it that just drive what would drive you right now man that that's 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 a, that's a, one. that's a, oh man that's a tough one i i, I I would say if okay, if somebody held a gun to my head and asked me like you have to dump one of the two, it pro I'd probably keep my. I think I, if I didn't have my camera, I'd probably go a little crazy. Yeah, see, it's the camera. It's the yeah, camera. probably that yeah. ultimately is your final product. So yeah, that you're right. driving towards. Um, so that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, we did get a question about equipment before, but is there any special equipment, photography equipment that you or camera that you use that you just love and have to have, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, well, one thing is I shoot um, with a 35 millimeter lens, which that does give it kind of kind of gives it a cinematic look a little bit. That's, you know, 35 millimeters kind of a uh, especially especially in the earlier days, it's kind of a it was a more universal used lens uh, size. Mm -hmm. But I, I got my my stuff is actually it's most people are not going to have the stuff that I have. It is very expensive stuff. I like I spent years saving for the stuff and buying it. and this was like when i was knee deep in my wedding stuff so that's why i have it all yeah. um you know i have like a really expensive camera i have really expensive lights so it's not i know this stuff most people aren't going to have but there is stuff you can do you know i i would say 
DSLRs, it is, kind of, it is kind of more of a common thing for people to have maybe a lower end model. And all you have to do is get a tripod. You can buy, there is cheap lights you can buy and you can spend a hundred dollars on a, on a set of lights. And if you really want to get crazy with your, with your miniatures, it is something you could do if, you know, if you really want to, and it, it you don't necessarily have to spend $6,000 to get yourself started. You could, you could spend 500 bucks and be right. rocking and rolling. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's really good advice because what I do find um, is that there is an emerging group of people who are now shooting their miniatures. Mm -hmm. They're doing it beautifully and it's sort of pushing the envelope on how things get shot. And it's just fascinating to see, not only you're just seeing you know, seeing mi miniatures be made and people ha collecting them, but now they're shooting them. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just because they want to really showcase their miniatures in a really nice light. It's not not to say like creating artistic, digital, beautiful imagery, but they are shooting it. And I think there's probably lots of questions on what can I do? Um, or what can I, what, what could I shoot with that will make my miniatures look better? Yeah. Um, I think, and you know, when I like some of the guys that I follow like on Instagram, some of the, like, um, the, the kind of like the really big guys, um, they, they, they do spend a lot of time on their pictures to make sure the presentation's there when they're showing their miniatures. A lot of the guys that scratch build like Josh or, um, you know, the guy that what the hell, I don't know what his real name is, Ryan. but, um, um, Ryan. Can, is that his name? Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Yeah. Monaghan. Yeah. Yeah. That guy, he's like, awesome. yeah, yeah. He's great. But, um, so like, you know, like those guys spend a lot of, you know, they make sure that their, their pictures look great. Um, you know, finding white backdrops to put uh -huh. behind, uh, for your, for your, um, so your miniatures really stand out. Um, there's even like this, like uh, that people use, if you're selling stuff, a nice thing that you might want to buy is like, there's these, um, oh, they're called like soft boxes, they're like boxes and you put your product inside the middle. Those are real good. Cause all I do is shine a light in there and it provides a nice, uh, nice soft shadow right on top of your uh, product there. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, no, I mean, yeah. Yeah. That really works. Yeah. Like a, a light, a, basically a light box. Yeah, exactly. Under mm -hmm. one of those little tented things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, why don't we take a second to see if there are any questions? Um, we do have some comments. Easy to make you, it, Mary's saying it's easy to make it look like what you want rather than painting. Yep, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I love miniatures because it's every art medium rolled up in one. Absolutely. And this, and, and um, Nicholas's work just takes it one step even further. Um, just creating these beautiful, and I would argue that you're a composition artist um, in that you pull all of these pieces together so beautifully to showcase, just to make everything look so great and to tell a story. So you're also about, about storytelling, using miniatures to, um, to storytell. For sure. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it's just again, it's just like um, it's 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 my photography background. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. uh. Someone said it there. It's Lynn, Lydia saying it's, you're a set designer, but yeah, that that makes sense too. Um, it is very set designy in mm -hmm. the sense that you know everything mm -hmm. is just laid out. It's composition, like a set would be. Um, what happens? Oh, this is a good question that that's coming on. Um, online is what happens to minis after your photo is done because <laughs> those are pretty large um they're pretty large sets that oh, you're hold creating. on let me, let me move this i'll show you uh-oh i got them. Oh, see him i got them up there on my right above my computer there's some of there's some of the stuff i have oh and, so you, you pull them off of the the landscaping and you keep the structure because i see i saw a windmill yeah here what, hold on let me what was the it. windmill from was that that was, that was uh you know the um the uh 80 days like there's a guy walking through the, the through the field it's on my instagram ah. and that's the windmill that's in the, in the side and that's the ship i used for the project and that's like this in the the, the the witch hut i made but um yeah so like that stuff i keep you keep uh but but like, like kind of like the landscape stuff i don't necessarily keep but like all these buildings i'm gonna keep up we're actually me and my girlfriend uh michelle we're playing up we're we're buying this um like a display case thing we're gonna put all these buildings in it so. awesome Awesome, awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's next for you? And 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 can people commission you? That's the other question. Do you do you take commissions? Uh, <laughs> I would I would say probably. I mean, maybe. Like, it would have to be like it would have to be the right project. Like, I've done a few. I've done a few. I turn most of my commissions down because I'm just like I don't really want to spend four months doing something. I'm kind of half in it. Um, but I I, I can't do them. Um, but. What's next is I, I, I really, I'm trying to hone my craft in miniatures. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm going to start trying to make, um, there's like, I'm working on the middle of a coffee shop. 
Uh-huh. I'm trying to build, I'm trying to do a little bit bigger scale, 124, so I can get more details in the miniatures. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to expand that a little bit more. I, I really want to kind of hone my craft in the miniature making, I get better. So, and still then shooting them, you're still planning to shoot them. I don't have any projects like this. Um, I'm going to be taking a long break after, as far as these type of things, I'm taking a break, um, yeah. because this has been a year of, yeah. especially this last month of trying to get all the, like, you know, there's like 10 models that came. There was like 10 different outfits I had to figure out trying to coordinate everyone to come. Like these guys drove five and a half hours to come to the shoot. I bet. I bet. It's so, that you're a producer too. That means. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of a nightmare. Oh, I mean, it was as smooth as it could go, but it was still pretty stressful. Yeah. Cause you know, you're like, I don't want to waste these guys time, you know? So. Um, of course. You, but, you have to worry about everything when you're the producer. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, mm-hmm. but this, just, I'm, you just, I'm just trying to practice really. I'm just trying to practice my miniatures. Um, yeah. just trying to make sure I can get, you know, you know, and I watch those guys on Instagram, like Josh, and uh, what Ryan was that his name Ryan? What the hell? Ryan, yeah, yeah. Ryan. Well, I see those guys. I'm just like, man, I got, I got, I got to work. I got to get better. So yeah. Well, I mean, I think you're doing a great job on what you're doing already. So you can only get better. So, and I'm just so thrilled to hear you say you want to do more miniatures. And that's just, we need more really, really good miniaturists like you, yeah, or so make fun. wonderful things and bringing other portions of art into play. Mm-hmm. Um, just like, just because it just expands and makes makes pe- more people look in when yeah. you're doing other things. They're like, oh, photography, boom. Let me see what that what that guy's doing. Oh, model making, boom. Um, so- And I think, I think it, yeah, and it's, you know, like, you know, in spot, when people inspire different things, inspire different people, you know, yeah. if, you know, if my, if, if my stuff can inspire one person to try something they don't normally do, that's, that's, super awesome you know I've, I've i've had a few people you know email me here and there saying that you know i've tried this they'll show me their work you know it's really awesome and i'm really glad that people try new things when they see my stuff that they never may have thought of before yeah um you Great. know it's yeah yeah all right cool any any other quick me- um um questions from you guys folks before we wrap up and let nicholas go on this wonderful sunday afternoon um, oh, I have to say you've inspired me and um, I'm sure you're, you continue to inspire other people. And I encourage you guys to, you know, check out um, uh, Nicholas's Instagram. You also have a website mm-hmm. so you can see more pictures on your, on both on your, on your website, as well as your, your, um, your Instagram. We're going to put the link in there for you. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much for spending this time with us and showing us your work. This has been awesome. Yeah, it's been great. I just did let everybody know this project, this Romeo and Juliet project. If you follow me on my Facebook or Instagram, yeah. um, prob- you're gonna how I'm gonna release this is I'm gonna release the whole project on Facebook on one post, but my Instagram I'm gonna kind of slowly leak the pictures across. So if you want to see the whole thing launched, like I'm I'm almost done. Like I have like two more pictures to get done. Yeah. So uh, follow me on the Facebook. Um, I can't wait to show this thing. It's gonna be awesome. Um, yeah. And you're gonna do a a, a movie too of of uh, film as as well. Yeah, the are beautiful too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the guy that actually some of the some of my footage I don't even have. Like somebody came and, and filmed, and he hasn't sent me the files yet. So I'm okay. not, that's going to not come out for about another month or two. But um, uh, my Facebook is Nicholas Bush Photography. Um, just Nicholas Bush Photography on Facebook. Perfect, Nicholas mm-hmm. Bush Photography on Facebook. Mm-hmm. All right, this has been awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and stop the share for now, and thank you again for joining us, and thank you everybody at home, and we'll see you during the week, maybe at our Instagram Live, and then next Saturday for Meet the Miniatures with Craig. So thanks again, Nicholas. Have a great rest of your day, and everybody at home, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.